Hi, my name's Rupert Bradley, and today I'm going to show you how to carry out a pre-start machine inspection on a JCB wheeled loader. I will also be going through the machine's controls and some of its features to show you how to get the best performance out of your machine whilst operating it safely. Before starting the machine, always carry out a pre-start inspection. To begin, ensure the bucket is on the ground, the machine is in neutral, the part brake is on and the machine is switched off. Secure the central articulation lock before carrying out any routine maintenance. Start by checking the tyres for signs of damage, looking out for punctures, signs of distortion, cuts or excessive wear, and embedded objects such as nails or bits of metal. Incorrect tyre pressures will affect the machine's stability. Always refer to the tyre pressure chart in the operator's manual before inflating the tyres. On wheeled loaders, tyre pressure should be higher in the front tyres to cope with the additional weight when loaded. It's good practice to check the tyre pressure regularly to avoid accelerated tyre wear and unsafe operation. Reinstall the valve caps firmly to prevent dirt from entering the valve. Continue to check the other tyres as you move around the machine. Whilst moving around the machine, keep an eye out for any steelwork damage. Pay particular attention to the pivot point welds and pins. Checking the pins are correctly in place and secured by their locking devices. Continue to check for damage or missing parts as you move around the machine. Take this opportunity to grease the machine. This should be done regularly and after washing or steam cleaning. Two strokes with the grease gun should be sufficient. Stop greasing when grease appears at the joint. There's a number of grease points on this machine. Refer to the operator's handbook as some grease points may be out of sight. As a tip, it's recommended you wear gloves, as grease from your hands could later be transferred to the machine's controls, resulting in unsafe operation. This machine is fitted with the optional auto-greasing system. This system periodically greases the loader arm pivot points, the central articulation joint, and the steering rams. Whilst completing the daily checks, always check to see there's enough grease in the reservoir. The machine's prop shaft must still be greased manually according to the service schedule. When the machine is switched on, the auto-greasing system defaults to normal duty mode. When working in arduous conditions, heavy duty mode should be selected by pressing and holding this switch and toggling through the different modes. Continuing the inspection. Check the cutting edge of the attachment is undamaged and secure. Look for signs of uneven wear as this could indicate low tire pressure on one side of the machine. Check the attachment is secured to the machine. If a quick hitch is fitted, like on this machine, check the hydraulic locking pins are in place. Whilst we're at this point of the machine, it's worth noting the location of the tie down points. There's two on the front chassis and four on the rear. Refer to the tie down procedure in the operator's manual when preparing the machine for transport on a trailer. Remember, Always fit the central articulation lock when transporting the machine on a trailer. Moving further around the machine, check all light lenses for damage. Also checking for broken or cracked window glass and mirrors reporting and replacing items if damaged. Visually inspect the hydraulic hoses and fittings for damage or kinks. Check for oil, fuel and coolant leaks below the machine. This also ensures you have checked to make sure no one is working under the machine before beginning operation. The HVAC cover can be opened using the ignition key. Here you can top up the washer fluid if required and access the cab air filters. You should now inspect the engine bay area. This rear grille lifts up for quick and easy access to the diesel, and DEF or ADBLUE fill points. It's important not to mix the diesel and ADBLUE fill points up. On JCB wheel loaders, the ADBLUE or DEF fill point is clearly labelled with a blue cap. To raise the engine cover, release this clamp and open the battery box. Here you can access the engine cover controls. Once you have checked the area above and behind the cover is clear, press and hold the up arrow. This will raise the engine cover 
and you can now access the engine bay area with minimal obstruction. Remember, isolate the electrics before working on the machine. The engine bay layout provides easy access to primary and secondary fuel filters, as well as the water separator, the hydraulic oil fill point and filters, the engine oil dipstick, fill point and filter, the engine oil drain point is located on the underside of the machine, with the coolant tank and fill point located at the top of the engine bay. Note the transmission oil fill point is located near the cab steps. The two-stage engine pre-cleaner is located here. It's there to prevent dirty air being drawn into the engine. This works in conjunction with a scavenge particulate system, which prolongs filter life by removing larger particles before they reach the filter. When completing your daily inspection, check the air filter intake holes are unblocked to allow maximum airflow. The cooling packs are stacked together at the rear of the machine for ease of access. This mesh on the engine cover prevents larger particles being drawn into the cooling packs. Particles small enough to pass through this should also pass through the cooling fins. However, it's good practice to regularly inspect the cooling packs to ensure the fins are not plugged and free from any damage. This optional swing out fan at the rear of the machine provides further access to the cooling packs for particularly dusty applications. Once the relevant checks are complete in the engine bay area, you can now lower the cover. Remember to ensure no one is working in the engine bay area and that any tools or objects have been removed. You can then reinsert the isolator key and lower the engine cover. Before entering the cab, make sure the cab steps and handrails are undamaged and free from clogged dirt. Always face the machine when entering and exiting the cab, maintaining three points of contact at all times. To access the fuses and relays, open this panel inside the cab. If a fuse blows, find out why and correct the fault before installing a new one. You can now remove the articulation lock. Clean the windows, light lenses and the rear view mirrors if required. Remove or secure all loose items in the cab, ensuring nothing can interfere with the machine's controls. ROPs and FOPs are built into the machine as standard for your safety. But remember, once seated and before starting the engine, always fasten your seatbelt. Emergency exits are designed into the machine in the event of it overturning. If the cab door cannot be used, this sliding window can be removed by using the glazing breaker at the right-hand side of the cab. If you are new to the machine, Familiarise yourself with the emergency exits before starting operation. Always refer to the operator manual if you are uncertain of anything. The JCB Command Plus cab can be set up to offer maximum comfort throughout the working shift. The deluxe seat option keeps the operator comfortable all year round, remaining cool in the summer with seat ventilation and warm in the winter with heated seats. Adjust the seat and steering column so you can comfortably reach all the driving controls. As a measure, you should be able to apply full brake pedal travel without having to stretch. The right hand armrest can be adjusted to provide comfortable grip of the joystick. These controls are mounted to the seat for improved comfort over rough terrain. Check the mirrors are positioned correctly to give you good rear view visibility. The wing mirrors are electronically adjusted from inside the cab using this knob. Fluid level checks are automatically completed when the ignition is turned on. These green ticks inform the operator that the fluid levels are correct. A red cross or warning light will be displayed if the fluid level is low and needs topping up. This is presented through the front screen, which also displays any machine warning lights, the fuel level, the coolant temperature, engine speed, as well as indication of any lights in use. On top of this, the LCD screen provides further information, including the current gear selection, time, operational icons, ground speed, and an information area which can be scrolled through by pressing these up and down arrows. This area provides live data such as DEF fluid level and hydraulic and torque converter temperatures. The Command Plus cab can be specified to include a large secondary screen. This feature allows for machine personalization, meaning the operator can set the machine up to suit the application at hand. The machine remembers the last input, so when you start the machine the next day, you're ready to go. 
this screen will continuously display a rear view image. When in reverse, this image fills the entire screen, improving operator visibility and sight safety. It's easy to navigate through the display using this rotary dial. Rotate clockwise or anti-clockwise to scroll through the menu, clicking the dial to select the highlighted item. Click the dial again to confirm a setting change. You can go back or return home at any time by pressing these buttons. The secondary display also provides an on-screen handbook feature. Pressing this button will display a view of the machine with all areas of interest highlighted. Scroll and click a hotspot for machine information in the area highlighted. All the machine's operational switches are clearly laid out down the right-hand side A pillar for ease of operation. The switch will illuminate red when activated. Toggle through the switch until the red light turns off to deactivate the feature. Machines fitted with a secondary screen offer a help feature which details the function of each switch on the A-pillar. To access this feature, press the question mark button and scroll through the menu until you find the switch you are interested in. If you would like to know more about how a switch works and the secondary display is not fitted, please always refer to the operator's handbook. It's important to set the machine up to provide maximum productivity and efficiency. In most applications, it's recommending activating three of the following features. Turn Auto Shift on with the shifter turned to position 4A. With Auto Shift turned on, the machine will select the most appropriate gear automatically to improve drivability and efficiency. Turn Transmission Disconnect on. With this function turned on, the machine will intelligently reduce drive from the transmission when the brakes are pressed, diverting all available power to the hydraulics when required. This feature helps reduce operating costs by lowering fuel consumption and increasing brake life, as the brakes are not constantly fighting the transmission. Turn the Smooth Ride system on. With this option activated, Smooth Ride will automatically engage above a preset speed. Smooth Ride improves ride control and comfort, particularly over rough terrain. The machine's in cab temperature controls are located here and operated like so. The multi purpose steering column stalk controls, the turn signals, the road lights, the horn, and the front windscreen washer and wiper. There's two in cab 12 volt auxiliary power sockets, as well as a USB port to power or charge electrical accessories. Moving to the joystick controls, you'll find the machine's forward, neutral, and reverse selection conveniently located on the underside of the joystick. Through the joystick, you can also control the auxiliary controls, manual transmission kickdown, the horn, and diff lock if fitted. The loader arms are controlled by the joystick. Pull back to lift, push forward to lower, move left to crowd, and right to dump. To start the machine, ensure the battery isolator is inserted. Ensure the park brake is on and the machine is in neutral. Turn the key to the ignition position. When the preheat lamp goes off, turn the ignition key fully clockwise to start the engine. Release the starter key as soon as the engine starts. Once the engine has started, check that all the warning lights have gone off, other than the park brake light. If any warning lights fail to go off or come on whilst the engine is running, stop the machine as soon as it is safe to do so. The accelerator pedal is located on the right hand side of the footwell, whilst the brake is located on the left hand side. Operate the controls and hydraulic services to ensure each function is working correctly. In cold climates, do not attempt to operate the machine immediately after starting. Allow at least 10 minutes warm-up time with the engine at half throttle. Operate the arm and bucket services to warm up the hydraulic oil. With a hydraulic quick hitch fitted, attachment change is quick and safe if done correctly. To operate the hitch, push and hold this switch while you operate the auxiliary controls. This will release the attachment. To lock the attachment, operate the auxiliary controls only. This will push the locking pins out and secure the attachment. You can check the attachment is secure by pressing it to the ground. 
always carry out this operation close to ground level. Wheel loaders are designed to handle various types of materials, all with different density factors. Check the correct size bucket is being used and matches the material being handled. Before travelling on public roads or muddy sites, attach the fender mud flaps like so to help reduce spray. During operations, always adhere to the site rules and speed limits, paying attention to other machinery and workers on site. If possible, when extracting material, always head directly into the pile with the machine straight. This will deliver maximum drive performance. Attempting to extract material with the machine in the articulated position will severely reduce the machine's overall pushing performance, resulting in inefficient operation. To ensure maximum bucket fill every time, position the bucket parallel to the ground by using the bucket reference points. Then lower the bucket to the ground whilst driving forwards. When the bucket enters the material, just before the tyres start to slip, raise the loader arms to increase traction on the front wheels. Whilst continuously driving forwards into the material, simultaneously lift the loader arms and crowd the bucket, retrieving a full load. Always check behind you before switching the machine to reverse, keeping the load low to the ground for increased stability. Remember, it should always be your objective to prevent wheel spin in order to increase tractive effort and prolong tyre life. When discharging the material at height, for example when loading, try to ensure the machine is on level ground, both sideways and fore and after. If you do need to load on a gradient, it is safe practice to face the machine up the slope to maximise stability. Remember, with the machine in the articulated position, the load capacity and stability reduces. Always try to load straight and head on into the skip. After discharging the material at height, reverse and lower the loader arms as soon as possible for safer working operation. During load and carry duties, always drive with the arms as low as possible to the ground to ensure optimum stability. Remember, turn smooth ride on to improve comfort and increase load retention. JCB wheel loaders feature a central articulation joint allowing up to 40 degrees articulation for excellent maneuverability in confined areas. This design also ensures both front and rear wheels follow each other, whether traveling forwards or in reverse. This simplifies and improves site safety when working next to walls for example, as the loader will not kick out and strike an object. Pay attention to ground conditions keeping the site as clear as possible from spilt material and debris. This helps increase stability and reduces tyre wear. When working on uneven ground, such as a quarry base, avoid travelling at high speeds with the bucket on the ground, as hidden objects could suddenly stop the machine. This could cause significant damage to the machine or attachment, as well as being very uncomfortable for the operator. These loaders are highly productive machines with safety features built in. However, it's essential you understand these machines before putting them to work. Please always refer to the operator's manual for further information. Thanks for watching.